Welcome to our mini lesson on multiplying expressions. We're going to be looking at expressions like this set of fractions here, and we are going to be multiplying them and simplifying. So to do that, the way that I found, just to explain what the process of what we're doing, is that we are going to take each term and expand it into being its prime factors. So let's take a look at what we have for prime factors. First off, let's look at the numbers. 15, the prime factors of 15 are 5 times 3. So this is going to change into being 5 times 3. And a squared will be a times a. 4 will be turned into 2 times 2. And 6 will be 3 times 2. b squared will become b times b. So this is essentially what we have right here. Instead of saying 15a squared b, we'll say 5 times 3 times a times a times b. It means the same thing, but it's gifted to us in a way that we can cancel out a lot easier. So all I've done is expanded each of these terms into their prime factors. Now what we're going to do is find things that are the same on the numerator and the denominator. And it doesn't matter if they're in this fraction or this fraction, because as you see, it's multiplication straight across. So let's go ahead and look at some of those terms. First, we have a 3 up top here and a 3 down here, so we can cancel those out. We've got a 2 and a 2, so those can cancel each other out. And these cancellations means that we're dividing each of them by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 2 divided by 2 is 1. All right, so they become 1. And 1 multiplied times a number is not changing the value. It's just basically eliminating it out of making this a confusing expression. All right, let's look at some other things we have in common. We have an x on the top and on the bottom. We have a y on the top and on the bottom. We have an a on the top and the bottom, so we'll cancel those out. And then we have a 1b that we're going to be able to cancel out. So essentially, what we can do now is get rid of all of these things, or multiply 5 times 1 times 1 times a times 1, right? And we will multiply all of them out to get 5a times 2, and this would be 1, because everything has canceled out 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, so we'll have a 1 on the bottom. And the a and b here have canceled out, so we have a, just a b. And we can multiply 5a times 2, which gives us 10a, and 1 times b, which gives us b. This would be our final simplified solution right there. Okay. Now, magnifying things out like this and listing out all of the prime factors, that's a good way to do it. If you have another way, a shorter way, like you can see 15 and 6, they both have a factor of 3. And so you go ahead and do it that way. That's fine, too. And some people prefer to do it in that way. If you list everything in its prime factors, the chances are that you're not going to miss anything that is the same on the numerator and the denominator. All right, let's go ahead and look at um, our next question here. This one here, we have 3a minus 2 over a squared minus 4. And we're multi or we're multiplying that times a plus 1, a minus 2, and 9a minus 6. The first step is that we are going to factor these into their prime factors. We are going to, when we do this, do a couple of things that you need to understand before you can, can do all of this. First off, 9a minus 6, both of these terms have a common factor of 3. So we're going to factor out 3 from both of these terms. The next part is this difference of squares. This is a perfect square minus a perfect square. And if you've learned about difference of squares, then that's great. And that's kind of a prerequisite to understanding this. If not, if you have a perfect square like a squared minus another perfect square like 4, this is the way that you factor it. You take the square root of the first term, you put it in there, square root of the final term. Okay, so the square root of the first term plus the square root of the final term, and the square root of the first term minus the square root of the final term. All right, so that's the difference of squares. And this right here, this binomial, we factored out the value of 3 from each of these terms. So now we're in a position where we can go ahead and start eliminating common factors. So 3a minus 2, that whole binomial can be eliminated. 
we also have A minus 2 on both the top and the bottom, so we can eliminate that. We don't have anything else common. We've got a 3, we've got an A plus 1, and an A plus 2. There's nothing else common between all of those terms. You can't just pluck out parts of them. There's no A plus 2 on the top, and there's no A plus 1 on the bottom. So we rewrite this as 1 over A plus 2 times A plus 1 over 3. And when we multiply, this will be our final simplified solution. We will have one, A plus 1 over 3 times A plus 2. And that is the end of our mini lesson.